Shalom, dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Paul Simon Gileros and welcome to the Midweek with the Saints podcast. The purpose of this podcast is simple. It is to expose all of us, including myself, to the lives of the saints. And the lives of the saints are meant to inspire you and me to strive unto sainthood in Christ Jesus. So why is this podcast done in the middle of the week? The reason is this. The lives of the saints all point towards Jesus over here. <laughs> and Jesus in particular, it points to Jesus in the Eucharist. The lives of many saints out there point to Jesus in the Eucharist. The life of Padre Pio, St. John Paul II, whichever saint that is canonized, just name it. It points to the Eucharist. And I figured that since the Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life, it would be wise for us to pause smack in the middle of the week to have a kind of examination of conscience, a reality, a reality check to see if we are really living out the Eucharist as the source and summit of our lives. You know, most of us go for Mass on Sundays at the very least. And coming together today for this podcast to pause and reflect on the lives of the saints, we can kind of test and see if we are really drawing strength from the Mass which we just went for last Sunday as the source of our lives, and whether we are really pressing forward towards the next Sunday's Mass to give God the greatest honour, glory and thanksgiving at the summit of Christian life. So in the middle of this week, as you listen to this podcast, this Wednesday, 30th of September, we are looking at the source and summit of Christian life, the source being the Mass we just went, last week, went for last week, and the summit being the Mass which we are going for the coming week. So in the middle of the week, let us look at the lives of the saints and just check if we are really on track, if we are really drawing strength from the Eucharist and if we are giving God the greatest glory, honour and thanksgiving. Welcome to the first episode of our podcast, Midweek with the Saints. Today we're going to talk about Saint Joseph, who is with me on my left. And um, this is one of my favourite saints. Well, the reason being, I grew up in the parish which is dedicated to St. Joseph in Batugaja, Perak, Malaysia. And there are many titles attributed to St. Joseph. St. Joseph the worker, St. Joseph the carpenter, St. Joseph the dreamer. But the favourite title of mine is St. Joseph the terror of demons. St. Joseph the terror of demons. That sounds scary, that sounds cool. Just imagine St. Joseph over here with a pair of shades, you know. I mean... I could imagine that. <laughs> Anyways, brothers and sisters in Christ, today let us look at the life of St. Joseph. There are many aspects um, connected to the various titles that he has. St. Joseph the dreamer, the worker, the carpenter and so forth. But today in particular, I would like to zero in on St. Joseph the dreamer and flowing from that, this great aspect of prompt obedience of St. Joseph. We know that St. Joseph, when he had his dream and when the angel appeared to him, asking him to flee from Egypt, he obeyed promptly. He got up, he took Mary and he took Jesus and he fled to Egypt. You know, prompt obedience is very important in the kingdom of God. And once you and I have made a decision to follow Jesus, it is important that we do it with prompt obedience day in and day out. You know, it's interesting because in today's readings, in today's gospel, we see in the last words of today's gospel, Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand on the blow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. No one who sets a hand to the blow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. Friends, when St. Joseph had the dream, he did not dwell on it, he did not sit on it, he did not think twice about his past life, about the way things were in the, before he even gave his yes to God and the angel. He did not dwell on how his life was just calm and peaceful in the past or whatever pleasures he had in the past. But instead, he took Jesus, he took Mary and he fled to Egypt because he knew the importance of prompt obedience. As St. Augustine commenting on this verse, which says, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what is left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. 
He says that it is as though someone is calling you from the east, but you look towards the west. My friend Saint Joseph, when somebody called him from the east, he looked to the east. When the angel said, go to Egypt, he went to Egypt. There is power in prompt obedience and the rewards, the rewards are many, manifold. Another early church father commenting on this text in today's gospel says, or rather likens this, uh, words which uh, Jesus spoke to the story of Lot and his wife. When Lot and his wife were leaving from one place and going to the other place which God had commanded them to, Lot's wife turned back and because she turned back, she was not fit for the kingdom of God and therefore she turned into a pillow of salt. Saint Joseph on the other hand took Mary and took Jesus and this holy fam family fleed to Egypt. And instead of turning back and looking at their past, dwelling on their past, they've pressed forward. Just like St. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. Forgetting what lies behind, well, sorry, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the price of the heavenly call. Of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. If we struggle to forget our past life, our various sins in the past, our various indulgences in the past, like Lot's, Lot's wife, instead of becoming the salt of the earth, we become pillar of salt. But if we imitate Saint Joseph in his prompt obedience, when God says, get up, give this up and go, he went. If we imitate St. Joseph in prompt obedience, we will become the salt of the earth instead of a pillar of salt. So friends, let us turn to St. Joseph. Let us ask for his intercession to promptly obey the call of God over our lives. God is good and God wills the good of our beings. Romans 8.28 says that God makes all things work together for the good of those who love him. Let us imitate St. Joseph. And I just want to leave you with two things in particular. So what is it that God is asking you to leave behind as you strive for his kingdom? As you press forward for that goal which St. Paul talks about, that heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. As you press forward towards God's call over your life, there are things that God asks you to leave behind. There are things... Um, ways of living in the past, old habits that God asks you to leave behind and don't, don't even look back at them. What is it that God ask, is asking you to leave for good? God will ask you to let go of certain things so that you can take up other things in the future and even in the here and now. And always remember this, brothers and sisters, there are far greater things ahead than we leave behind. There are far greater things ahead than we leave behind. And I believe that this was the conviction in St. Joseph's heart. The conviction in the heart of many saints when they just press forward for God's calling in over their lives and they gave up whatever they had. They gave up riches, they gave up treasures, they gave up possessions. Maybe God is calling you to give up the hours you spend on social media and instead to use that time to pray. Maybe God is asking you to give up um, social drinking and asking you to press forward and start evangelizing. What is it that God is asking you to leave behind and to flee to Egypt so that you can strive for holiness? Ask yourself this question or rather ask Holy Spirit this question. Come Holy Spirit, reveal to me where I should go, what I should do and what should I should give up and where I should leave from. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the second thing that I would like to leave you with is this. Um, there is this consecration to St. Joseph, 33 days consecration to St. Joseph, let me just put it up here, which is done, a book which is written by a priest from the Order of the Median Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. So this is a 33 days uh, do-it-yourself retreat program. I'm sure many of you have heard of the 33 days morning glory. This is pretty similar to that. And it's written by a brother priest of Father Michael Gately, who is the author of uh, Morning Glory. 
So this is the consecration to Saint Joseph. I'll put up the links in the description so that you can purchase an ebook. You know, it's no coincidence that I'm speaking on Saint Joseph today. And one of the suggested dates to start this consecration journey is this very day, 30th September. So if you can purchase the ebook by today, I encourage you to start this journey towards consecration to Saint Joseph. But if you are a person who likes um, physical books instead, you can go ahead and order the book and start this consecration whichever day you like, whichever day you receive it. Or just start it at the next suggested date in the book. So brothers and sisters in Christ, today I have just touched the tip of the iceberg, the surface of this great saint. And there's a lot to learn about Saint Joseph. You know, the Greek word that is used for adoration to God is latria, and it's exclusive. We can only give latria, adoration to God alone. And then there is this hierarchy of source of adoration and veneration we give to God and the rest of the saints. So God is just latria and adoration. We give him all adoration when we just gaze our eyes towards him. Next to God, uh, just below God is hyperdulia. Hyperdulia means we give the greatest reverence, and that goes to our beloved Mother Mary. After Hyperdulia, many of us know about Dulia, reverence to all the saints. We give equal reverence and veneration to all the saints. Dulia basically means veneration. But between Hyperdulia and Dulia, there is Proto Dulia, the first revered. The first revered is Saint Joseph. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has, in his great master plan for salvation, a special role for St. Joseph. And the church, in her wisdom, is beginning to unfold this. And the way that you can tap into this wisdom is to get this book and to do this consecration. St. Joseph is a spiritual father, and he has wonders in store for you in your life. That's all for this week. And I encourage you to drop in the comment section any questions you have and I will address them accordingly. May God bless you and have a blessed half week ahead.